You know, when I set out to make my second long form foodie beauty video, I never anticipated it would eventually become a two hour feature length documentary, nor did I expect it to be met with such positive feedback and quickly become the most popular video on my channel. Within one week it has accrued over a quarter of a million views, and if it hadn't been demonetized at around 220,000 views, which knocked it out of the algorithm, I would have expected it to reach at least half a million views by Christmas. But that's alright. I've made enough money from ads and PayPal donations and gained enough new subscribers and patrons that it was well worth the effort. But the biggest reward I've received since releasing this project has of course been Chantal's reaction. I wasn't aware that roller coaster rides were still running during winter time, but it was a pleasant surprise. She saw the video in full. That's been made clear and is to be expected. It's well known that she watches every video and reads every post written about her on the internet. Initially, her response was vague, taking to her community tab to vent her feelings as she so often does. If you were to take a look over there today, it would appear as if she accepted the video with humility and grace. But, as with everything Foodie Beauty, things aren't as simple as they appear on the surface. In her first response, she humbly informs her viewers that criticism is very hard to take and that life as a public figure on YouTube has been a very difficult adjustment for her. The majority of the post is just her humble bragging, fishing for sympathy, and proclaiming that the opinions of her critics don't matter. It was your typical foodie beauty damage control post, containing nothing of real value. But there is one sentence that I think is very important. If there is anything I regret so far being a YouTuber is letting these judgments get the better of me and in turn lash out and lower myself. Am I picking out this sentence because of its egregious grammar? No. But it's not lost on me. I picked out this sentence because of the post that followed just a few hours later. It was a full blown meltdown, better than I could have ever hoped for. She hit all the classics. This is ridiculous. This is beyond criticism. This is bullying and discrimination. Multiple calls to arms to her loyal fan base of 8 feeders and 19 sock accounts, claiming I need help, and for no reason at all, calling life of a free spirit a psycho. You know, I was joking in my video when I said that it was bizarre that so many of the people Chantal has been lashing out at recently happen to be black, but calling Callie a psycho for no reason in a post that has nothing to do with her really makes me think there might be something to it. Well, after rage typing this post, she fired up the Canadian gravy train and headed right for the comment section of my video. And it's at this point where I would actually feel sympathetic for Chantal if I wasn't privy to all the horrible things she's done to people over the years. It seems to me that she was under the mistaken impression that I'm some sort of serious documentarian and that my sole purpose was to display her moral failings and pass judgment on her as a person. She thought I would parry her verbal assault with a long-winded response of my own, refuting her unfounded allegations against me and reiterating the reasons why she receives the kind of negative criticism that she does. But by my nature, I'm not a documentarian. I'm an internet troll, so the objective mask I put on for the documentary was off, and I responded the way you would expect a troll to respond. I pinned the comment and advised her to have a gravy and settle down. I imagine at this point, she let out a primal scream that could be heard across all of Canada and began chowing down on chunks of cheese by the fistful. Realizing that my only response would be to pour more fuel into the engine of the gravy train, she deleted both her call to arms and the comment on my video. She replaced the post in her community tab with an announcement that no one, not a single soul saw coming. She said she was quitting YouTube. For real. Seriously this time, guys. I'm not gonna lie to you, at this point, I was on cloud 9. She was refuting her complaints that my video was one-sided and filled with lies and misrepresentations by going through the very cycle I had described over and over again in real time for fans and critics alike to view. But my excitement soon turned to worry, and then to despair as I realized I'd gone too far. This time she was actually serious about quitting, and no one has heard from her in well over a week. No, just kidding. She took my advice, poured herself a goblet of Colonel Sanders' finest gravy, and settled down, returning an hour later with her head held high, sporting a brand new outlook on life, something we've never heard from her before, that she's above her critics, and that they aren't worth her time. Wow, so this person's response to me confronting him about his video about me was, have a gravy and settle down laughing my ass off, really truly eye-opening as to the types of characters we are dealing with. You guys are right, 100% not worth my time. That response right there shows what types of people they are, and like wayward children, the best thing to do is ignore them. Ah, 
Taking a page from her mother's book, I see. I really need to be less impulsive and really look at the bigger picture. I just hit 60k subscribers and I have some sponsorships coming up. I also have a ton of supporters. I don't know why I'm bitching. I'm going to take a small break though, guys. I do have a product review I need to put up on Monday though, which I forgot about. See you then, XO. This is seriously the last time I write in this damn community section about this useless crap, laughing out loud. Her break lasts a full day before she returns in high spirits with an epic plan to dunk on the haters. <laughs> by drinking a mug of gravy on camera. Now, simply by the fact that you're seeing this video, you should know that she didn't actually follow through, because if she did, I would have died and went to heaven. There really would be no topping getting so far under someone's skin that they drink gravy on camera just to spite you. The video is uneventful. She starts off by removing her bra and giving it a deep inhale because I, I, I don't know what's going on in her head anymore. Really, I, I think she might be broken. She says she had planned to uh, troll everyone by putting some cherry cola in a gravy boat but couldn't find the proper receptacle. Honestly, I think she bought the gravy but chickened out last minute and just slammed it back like a drunk at a bar after three days in the desert before she started filming. The next day, we get a classic pizza and poppers binge, just full on eating her feelings mode. She does a bit of simmering in the following days, putting out a review of a box of some free garbage someone sent her before popping out another angry community post directed at me Monday afternoon. And while it may not have been the chugging gravy on camera I had so hoped for, it was still delicious in its own special way. Alright, so I'm only going to address this once and for all and give my opinion on a certain video that was done exposing all of the bad things I supposedly am. First, the creator and his slash her followers will claim that this is not bullying and is only a mere reflection of my past behaviors online. <laughs> I see what you did there, Chantal. And let me assure you that despite my angelic voice, I am a man. Your little insults are cute, but here's a bit of advice. If you want to try and get under my skin by implying that I'm secretly a female, don't refer to me as a he and a man-child for the rest of your post. She continues. However, that is not entirely fair since any time I have lashed out, it was in response to hateful or hurtful things being said about me. I will agree that I have not handled criticism in the best way in the past, but as a normal person who all of a sudden has hundreds of people dissecting your life online every chance they get, yes, this has been a very hard adjustment for me. Do you have gravy on the brain, sweetheart? If you're having trouble remembering how you got to this point in your life, there's a two hour documentary that shows you've been handling criticism in the exact same fashion since you had less than 5,000 subscribers. This hasn't been an all of a sudden overnight thing. It's never mattered who it was coming from or what their intention was. From day one on your channel, every time someone has had even the slightest criticism of you, your gut reaction has been to blame it on fat shaming and bullying. It is also a one sided video with the sole purpose of defaming my character, which is why I said it is bullying. It also has the intention of trying to humiliate me for talking about drinking gravy, things I talk about openly in my stories. Chantal, no one forced you to drink gravy and no one made you talk about anything. If you don't like looking in your own reflection, don't put it out there for the world to see. It is one-sided again because people like to blame me for saying nasty things, but they were always done in self-defense. Uh, yeah, the fact that you freak out on people in response to criticism isn't a big secret or something I tried to hide. It's the thesis of the video. Should I have said some of the things I said? Absolutely not. But I am not going to dwell on them because I could also do a five hour documentary on them and their community, but I am not going to, nor do I have the time to do this now. I don't know about everyone else, but I'd love to see someone who can't be bothered to edit the farts out of her videos try and produce anything other than feeder fodder. Why is it okay for people to say things like, kill yourself, you should be put down like a sick animal, or I hate her, she is disgusting. And comments like this can be all found on those videos that are not bullying by the way, but surely promote it. But when I say something back it's a big deal and a documentary has to be made by some man child living in his mom's basement. I'm guessing she expected this little quip to upset me, but speculation about my living situation doesn't hold much weight when it's coming from someone living in a 400 square foot rundown apartment. People watch these videos and because they are one sided and dead set on making me look bad by showing what I said but not the entire context is what is wrong with videos like that. Oh my god this grammar. 
I am human too, and no one is perfect. I will never apologize for being imperfect or having moments of weakness, especially to those who don't deserve my time or energy and have basically made YouTube hell for me at times. Punctuation, Chantal. I never made videos criticizing or targeting people like what has been done to me. That's because you're incapable of producing anything. That being said, YouTube has made me learn a lot about how to handle things, and in the end, I agree I am at fault for a lot of this, because had I just ignored it from the get-go, it wouldn't be so bad, but my pride and ego got the best of me. You live, you learn, you grow. <laughs> uh, I, I won't, I won't, that, that would be too easy. I am keeping the drama and negativity from my channel from now on. I cannot control people having their opinions, but no drama. Please keep things respectful. We all deserve respect. XO, love you guys. This little gem lasted maybe five minutes on her channel before it was deleted. Afterwards, I found a few comments on my video that I'm 99% sure are from one of her sock accounts, which left me rolling out of my chair with laughter. She then uploads another product review, this time for all natural makeup. <laughs> The review is beyond parody and, t and turns immediately into a makeup mukbang. Because to Chantal, if something can be eaten, it must be eaten. The video was pure gold, but it's no longer available on her channel. Now, I'm not one to tell people what to do, I'm not gonna be your internet daddy. But I saw quite a few people contacting the owners of these companies and harassing them about sending Chantal products. Look, do what you wanna do, but to me, this is petty and stupid. For one, these companies send out mass emails to creators. Zachary Michael was even offered the chance to give the edible makeup a review himself. They don't research the people they ask to do reviews, and they shouldn't need to. And two, it's really best to let Chantal be the one who makes an ass out of herself on the internet. If you engage in this sort of behavior, you're only going to feed her victim complex and drive her off the internet. And then, the entertainment will be gone. It's okay to fight back when she's flagging videos or abusing the copyright system or to do a bit of light trolling here or there. But eating makeup like a lunatic isn't hurting anyone. And that pretty much catches us up on the fallout. I was hoping for more, but it appears as if she actually went through with some sort of surgery this time around. She was so bound determined to prove to everyone that she was telling the truth that immediately upon regaining consciousness, she posted an update to her community tab and it looks like she'll be recovering for quite a long while. I'd say the chances of her freaking out again from her hospital bed are about 50-50, but only time will tell. More than likely, this will be my last video about Chantal, and before I close the book on her, I want to address a few things from my video. First, I didn't realize that the woman battling cancer that Chantal insulted actually has a channel she regularly uploads to. I didn't do my due diligence and thought it was simply a one-off upload, so I'll be linking her channel, Cancer Warrior, in the description. I'd like to see her get over a thousand subscribers so she can get her channel monetized. I also need to make a few corrections that were pointed out in her Kiwi Farms thread. 1. In her cheese and pink wig Halloween mukbang, it was grape juice in her glass because she didn't have a wine opener. 2. The pre-op liquid diet I said she was supposed to follow before her last surgery was likely not doctor prescribed. She said it was her own idea, but she does lie, obviously. And 3. She hasn't officially been diagnosed with binge eating disorder. She said that she was, and when people started talking about it, she recanted her statement. It's important for me to correct the record, but honestly, I'm pretty happy with only a few simple mistakes. At some point in the future, I'm considering doing something like this for Amberlynn Reed. But more than likely, the next internet personality I'm going to cover will have more of a male following. Someone that I will actually enjoy covering. In the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter or Steam and support the channel via PayPal, Patreon, or New Project 2. You can also get yourself some gravy merch at my Teespring store. I'll probably keep all the products up until the next big project is released. So, lads and ladies, this is where old Toad gets off the gravy train. It's been one hell of a ride. See you in the next video.